I'm Condoleezza Rice. I'm the director of the Hoover Institution. I'm also a longtime faculty member at Stanford University, and I spent some time in government, including as the United States Secretary of State. I'm Jennifer Widom. I'm a professor of computer science and of electrical engineering here at Stanford. I'm also the dean of the School of Engineering. I've been at Stanford for 30 years. The Stanford Emerging Technology Review is bringing together the expertise of faculty in science and engineering together with the Hoover Institution to produce a publication and a project that's going to be highly impactful in educating policymakers and others. It's really important to educate government leaders, policymakers, industry leaders, and really the average person because today's emerging technologies and their impacts, they're profoundly complex and rapidly advancing. The review isn't to make policy recommendations, but it's to provide knowledge on cutting-edge topics at an accessible level so that those involved in making policy are well-equipped to understand the realities of the emerging technologies. We believe it's a perfect marriage. Uh, We are fortunate as Hoover to be a policy institute on the Stanford campus, and this way we can leverage Stanford, Stanford can leverage us. Hoover's in a, a great position to be the convener for this, and it gives us an opportunity to work with our scientific colleagues across the university. Stanford is uniquely well-positioned for an initiative like the Emerging Technology Review for several reasons. I always like to think about Stanford engineering as being quite unique. We're embedded in a world-class liberal arts university. We're co-located with professional schools. Really nowhere else is comparable. And we have a long history of collaborating across campus. These collaborations have been key to advancing everything from the creation of Silicon Valley to stunning discoveries and inventions in human health. And the Stanford Emerging Technology Review is a perfect example of a collaboration between engineering and the Hoover Institution, a collaboration that really couldn't happen anywhere else. It brings together our top-notch engineers with experts in policy and government. I can walk uh, 15 minutes to the engineering school and be with some of the best computer scientists in the world. I can walk across the street and, and be with people who study business and how the economy is developing. This will be an opportunity for the scientists and the engineers in the labs that are pushing the frontiers and creating these extraordinary transformative technologies like AI and synthetic biology and space technologies to come to the policy community with an understanding of what the implications are of the technologies that are being developed. The Stanford Emerging Technology Review will enhance Stanford's internal research and education mission as well, along with providing its value outside of Stanford. Students and faculty, they're eager to better understand the societal implications of their work. I've seen a dramatic increase in this desire just in the years that I've been dean. We have to understand that the technologies that are emerging in the labs at places like Stanford have tremendous promise. They also have potential tremendous downsides, and uh, policymakers need to be able to keep abreast of them. There are lots of opportunities and downsides, and how do we balance those? We need to ensure better understanding for the people who make laws around these technologies and also for the people who develop, market, and use them. I've spent my entire life uh, studying uh, countries that uh, we would now talk about as autocracies. And uh, there is a tremendous concern that almost anything in the hand of an autocracy is going to look different than it does with a democracy. Democracies have checks and balances. Democracies have veto groups. Democracies have free press. And when you think about the emerging technologies now, one can see how those institutional characteristics of autocracies are particularly dangerous versus uh, democracies where you do have multiple voices speaking about the ethics, uh, how they should be used, uh, what are the limits to which technology should go. The 10 emerging technologies we picked for the launch are a broad swath of important areas. They're also fundamental to Stanford Engineering's mission of making progress on the world's most pressing problems, including sustainability, human health, and technology access. I was asked not too long ago as a student of international security, will these become weapons of war? Sadly, I had to say every technology has become a weapon of war. 
And so the question is, how do we this time around as human beings show better wisdom about these technologies than we have in the past? So when we split the atom uh, and we're able to create nuclear energy, we were able to do medical isotopes. We were able to do civil nuclear power to turn on the lights, but we also created the atomic bomb. We're already seeing uh, in certain societies the use of these technologies in ways that I find troubling. We know that uh, facial recognition technology married with AI and large data sets is being used in China for the suppression of uh, Uyghurs. We know that uh, it is a way in those societies to follow your population and to ensure political conformity. We know that uh, AI and deep fakes, there are societies that are going to want to use those to influence political circumstances, elections and the likes. But one reason that we have the Stanford Emerging Technology Review is so that we can separate fact from fiction, so that we can uh, look when there is something that looks really troubling, that looks like it might really have uh, very bad effects for humankind, that policymakers can get on top of it. So it makes a lot of sense for an initiative like the Stanford Emerging Technology Review to come from academia in collaboration with industry, but more than from industry alone. That's because academia is focused on scholarship and discovery and technology rather than on any particular policy policy agenda or on making a profit. And that leads to better neutrality and depth in summarizing the impacts of the technologies. Our faculty really do understand the value of working with the Hoover Institution to help policymakers have a better understanding of key technology areas. We're confident that the Stanford Emerging Technology Review will be helpful in making progress in a way that's principled and conscious of its implications on society. You're not going to be able to stop the forward march of, of technology. But together, we can figure out ways that we can, uh, can mitigate some of the worst possible outcomes and really push forward some of the best. We really hope with the Stanford Emerging Technology Review that we can start that conversation, continue that conversation, continue adding to the knowledge base on which that conversation needs to take place, and help our leaders to deal with a tomorrow that is going to be very different than today. <laughs>